Vicki Blockman went on a mission to reframe the lawn life when she married husband Stephen and moved to the suburbs. A culinary expert and now a Travis County Master Gardener, she assists gardeners to find their path to resourceful techniques for the kitchen and wildlife habitat. A writer for Texas Gardener Magazine, she brings to it her experience in commercial kitchens and as a hands-on gardener. Her blog, Playing Outside, journals her home ground adventures. Turning fence-to-fence -fence grass into gardens started with amending anaerobic soil. It was stinky. It was not only dense clay, but it, it had a really nasty smell and was totally devoid of any life. I mean, when we dug our pond, Stephen laughed that there really wasn't any need to put a pond liner in there, that we should just build a fire in there and glaze that stuff. She didn't dump all the lawn in one day. For one thing, she wanted to get to know the lighting before she installed new plants. And so every year I had the annual moving of the bricks and I would just go out there and play in the garden and I would shift all the beds out about the width of two bricks or maybe a little bit more. At first, she simply lays the bricks down flat. Later, she digs them in at a slant, since these are scavenged house bricks with holes. You can tell when I start to be happy with an edge because the bricks get tilted and dug in. And at some point, I may go back and really make those hard edges. When I think I'm really going to leave it like that, I'll probably go in with limestone or something and make it more permanent not necessarily mortared, because I may still change my mind. The brief expanse of lawn she kept doesn't get extra water, but it's really a ball as a low maintenance ground cover. We need some area for the dogs to run. A charming barricade prevents their latest rescue, Brady, from too much communication with the dog next door. A young redbud tree will soon canopy this corner. To style up the blank privacy fence, she added height, color, and texture. Austin craftsman Bob Poole assisted with custom-made trellises. He works with regular plate steel given a rust patina that will get even better looking over time. Antique and heirloom roses, Vicky's trusty favorites, blanket fences with color and fragrance. Artfully, she combines plants to harvest for the kitchen and for crafts. At first, she just amended the soil in the wide holes they dug. But basically created an environment that the plants were reluctant to move out of. I mean, why would roots go you know, outside of that when outside of that is so nasty? So slowly but surely, I amended all of the beds. A bed filled with evergreen pass-along irises and seasonal wildflowers nestles near the patio. It's a deliciously fragrant spot to hang out among containers of scented geraniums and fruit trees, including a pass-along kumquat. A kit greenhouse, a gift from Stephen and his mom, is just as fragrant in winter when they move the cold tender plants indoors. To complete the refreshing scene, they added water. The prime motivator was tranquility. The sound of the pond cools the backyard. I mean, it, it seems ridiculous that a sound could cool you off, but if you're sitting here in the heat, you actually feel cooler when the pond is running. For a natural look, they arranged scavenge honeycomb limestone rocks. This actually is sort of like white noise. It makes it a little more soothing. It attracts wildlife. The birds are always here. I also noticed that I was creating a habitat for critters, but it became a more comfortable habitat for us as well. Now a certified wildlife and pollinator habitat, as well as a monarch way station, Vicki makes sure there's water, shelter, and food for everybody. Instead of hummingbird feeders, she plants food for them, like coral honeysuckle. She grows milkweed, the sole larval food for monarchs. The flowers nectar all kinds of butterflies and pollinators. Many insects fuel up and pollinate the patio citrus. Leaves attract swallowtail butterflies to lay their eggs. Vicki offers free rent for mason or solitary bees, great non-stinging pollinators. To customize insect hotels for them and leafcutter bees, 
She designed comfy quarters with repurposed vines. This four-star rated hotel started with a vintage metal rack for soda bottles. With help from fellow master gardener Cheryl Williams and her husband Ed Kimball, they drilled holes of the right size. Like with every project, Vicki's made a few modifications. One leafcutter bee found impromptu nesting on Vicki's tool bench. There was one trying very hard to decide whether to move into the hole in the handle of my cobra head gardening tool, which just happened to be the exact right diameter. And, and she would, was flying back and forth between that and a clay pot that also had a hole in it. And back and forth, back and forth. And she finally settled on the hole in my cobra head tool. To captivate nature's other bounty, rain, do-it-yourselfers Vicki and Stephen installed a 1,600-gallon rainwater collection tank. A 50-gallon tank near the vegetable beds doubles as a tiny trickle to a wildlife drinking fountain. Recycled bottles with screw-on adapters gently water containers when Vicki's on the go. For sun-loving vegetables, flowers, and herbs, she corralled a bright strip alongside the house. She kept some lawn on both sides of the house to slow down rainwater runoff from the street. Bob Poole charmed up the standard backyard gate. Vicky's trained a ladybank's rose over his arbor. In front, she left her lawn removal until last. What started the change was the trees weren't very healthy, the grass wasn't very healthy. The grass got to the point that we were either going to have to go in and dig out all that was there and build up the soil and put down new sod. We're gonna to have to do something. She decided to lose the lawn and spice up the dimension with drought-tough plants. Still youngsters in their first year, she's given them room to grow. Vicki's front porch design warmed up and magnified the narrow space. Bob Poole's trellis frames for a touch of enclosure. Wildlife gets the welcome sign, too. At one point in the year, cars drive by and clouds, orange clouds of queen butterflies fly up, and people will actually drive by and stop and back their car up and then drive by again. On Bob Poole's custom-made address sign, beneficial green lace wings laid intricate suspended eggs. Neighbors stop all the time. I love your yard. It's not just rocks. Those are their exact words. It's not just rocks. We still barbecue. We still do all this, you know, standard suburban stuff. Just in a cooler, more friendly environment. <laughs>